I wanted to, again, stress that ACE is for COVID-19 contingency planning, and we've tried to put the practices inside um, in such a way that they can be nicely aligned with interdisciplinarity, project-based learning, and open education, which are the kinds of engaged pedagogies that Plymouth is trying to um, develop uh, cohesively in the institution. And this is really important for fall because if people feel like they can just go somewhere else and get a cheaper, faster, more professional online experience, which let me tell you, they can, no matter what you think, <laughs> they can get it cheaper, faster, and more professional because people have been doing online for a long, long time. What they can't get is the kinds of commitments that we have at Plymouth to certain kinds of pedagogies with our students. So I think even if we're clunkier and messier, um, we have an opportunity to still be engaged in some of the ways that we like. So for example, with interdisciplinarity, can you think about building some modules that cross across different classes um, so that you could build in some ways to collaborate with different folks, particularly in asynchronous ways that wouldn't demand lots of um, you know, text streaming and, and uh, synchronous meetups. Um, can you think, for example, about um, project-based learning in this new remote environment? If you're going to be using technology, that means to a certain degree to connect with your students, you're gonna use the internet. The internet is also a great portal to the kind of world that we say Place it, things like TWP connect to, right? So we may need to think more intentionally about things like the showcase or projects. Um, we have a session on PBL um, tomorrow for, uh, TWP stands for Tackling a Wicked Problem. Um, it's not in the chat there. Um, and we have a, uh, a session tomorrow specifically looking at project-based learning um, in remote um, learning. The reason that's important is that if we don't preserve some of what makes Plymouth State special, it's really hard to imagine why it is important or helpful to students to come back um, to see us if we are online. And maybe you think it isn't. Um, but I tend to think when I work with my students, there's something, and there was this spring, something still very special and valuable about the kinds of pedagogies that we um, have at Plymouth. And uh, also, if we think about open education, open education is primarily about two things, removing access barriers, which is so much about what we're talking about um, in our sessions tomorrow, and also about removing barriers to letting students be producers, not just consumers of knowledge. So using the internet um, has been a very key thing for the last year, the CoLab has been working with lots of you because as you think about your students' work mattering, you've realized that flushing it away in Moodle is not a way to reflect that your students' work matters. So we've been using technologies already to help to uh, bring our students into relationships with their, with their larger communities. So we can continue doing some of that um, really well in the fall, and I think it could potentially um, help us. Uh, Martha is going to briefly talk about day two of um, Slipper Camp. Um, yeah. So one of the things we just want to um, explain a little bit about the topics of the sessions that are happening tomorrow is, um, you know, we could have, I guess, done sessions on each of the 18 um, practices that are in the ACE framework. But what we really wanted to do was sort of um, cut across um, that ACE framework with uh, the kinds of issues and concerns that we knew a lot of faculty had about uh, course planning for the fall, but do it in such a way that it still complements what we've been talking about this whole morning in terms of ACE. So all of these sessions um, were sort of designed and chosen because they intersect with that ACE framework in some way, and you'll probably hear the presenters tomorrow give a nod to that and talk about that at some point. Um, but the idea really is to try and um, provide a range of programming that covers um, everything from sort of how do I use this particular tool 
um, in ace-ish ways and in clustery ways to um, how do I um, how do I reduce disposable assignments, which is a, an actual um, item on that ACE framework that people may, may not be really familiar with. Um, so what you should go to tomorrow is whatever you're interested in. The other thing we want people to know though is that everything is going to be captured. We're recording all of the Zoom sessions <clears throat> and there will be a, excuse me, a web page on the CoLab website with a page for each of these with the Zoom capture as well as any resources um, that have come out of the preparation that the moderators um, and facilitators have been doing. And actually, <clears throat> uh, is there something else? No, no, not nothing else. Actually, okay. you talk you talk about this one and then I'll say something else. After. Um, since I made this ridiculous slide, I will talk about it. Um, I don't the title is just a nod to the fact that I never know what to call these things. Are they rules of twos or rule of twos or I don't know, every time I say it, I say it a little bit differently. I actually Googled it because I was like, there must be like rule of twos must be like a thing um, that has to do with um, sort of like pattern design or something. And um, no, it's actually a law. It's a Sith law from the universe of Star Wars. Um, two, there should be no more, no less. One to embody power, the other to crave it. That's not the rule of two that we're referring to. The rule of two that we're referring to that Robin mentioned earlier is this approach to really simplifying um, your approach, your, your, um, your, how you tackle this um, complexity with your courses by focusing on sort of two things at a time, which is why that ACE framework has two things in each box. Um, at the beginning of this whole pivot in March, Robin put together a worksheet that's available through this link. Um, on our website um, and we'll be continuing as we develop our resources for summer work on this to be emphasizing this the underlying value of the rule of twos which is simplify 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 focus on the pieces that feel manageable and that feel natural to you um, and leave the rest aside at least for the time being um, one more thing about ACE, um, there is more, as Robin said, more ACE supported guidance coming in June. We're hoping, uh, well, we're definitely planning on that to be available by mid-June, hoping that will be a little bit earlier. We're gonna be providing more ideas, examples, resources around each of these ACE informed practices, um, as well as linking them to the professional development programming that we're doing today and tomorrow. If you want to go and explore this, you can go to colab.plymouthcreate.net slash ACE at some point and read a little bit more, but that will be expanding in the coming weeks. Um, and last but not least, um, this is my Easter egg for CPLC season two people. Um, and we'll take any questions and discussion now. Um, so we got a question in the chat about, um, if you want to go back to the ACE um, framework. Yeah, is this Abby's question? Yes. Yeah, so um, I want, I tried to put the hot link there. I don't know why sometimes it hot links, sometimes it doesn't. But if you go to that um, ACE site there, uh, you, so the, once we get the curriculum loaded, there'll be lots more for you to play with around all of these practices and to take a deeper dive. Um, but the question is about um, how do we know exactly what any of these things are? For example, you see under adaptability, flexible deadlines. What does that mean? Um, if you click on the little description underneath on the website, it will give you a little bit more. Um, but once the curriculum is built, you should have much more to work with around all of these things. Some of the questions will not be um, answerable, meaning like, what do you mean by adaptable deadlines? You know, we probably mean something by it and we'll tell you what we mean, but that's just something that Martha and I, you know, thought up. Um, so one thing you really need to do with the practices is think about whether they match what work for you and also think about what they might mean for you. So obviously flexible deadlines, um, and, and actually, uh, just FYI, when we surveyed some students on um, Twitter, there's been lots of threads going about students tell us what the most helpful thing is. And flexible deadlines, not surprisingly, was right up ne near the top. 
even though some students get challenged by that kind of uh, freedom. But that's how the ACE model works is that you can get a little bit more detail by clicking on those descriptions. And then by mid June, you should have quite a bit more to work with, although we're still working on the architecture for how that curriculum um, will, will roll itself out. Um, I also wanna point out that um, we, Hannah, uh, Martha and I stay on staff and are not um, furloughed this summer and some folks in academic tech are the same. So the reason we're rushing right now is because most faculty go off contract. Um, of course, every time I say that, I feel like vomiting because so many of our faculty are contingent and they're not on contract anyway. And so it's just like, oh, you know, it's gonna be hard um, on so many of us in so many ways. But uh, Hannah, Martha and I for sure are gonna keep working mainly on this uh, curriculum and providing you with resources. But you can drop in um, Thursday or Friday. But after that, we're gonna be rolling out a really nice um, appointments interface because Thursday and Friday are likely to be a little bit chaotic. So uh, once you get your breath back and you get um, your grading finished, you can look through some of this stuff and then just make individual appointments, um, you know, particularly, you know, um, with Martha, who, thank God, you know, we hired her um, because this is really exactly what she does is um, support faculty in this kind of course design. But we also have other folks around. Um, Travis will be here this uh, summer and Jason as well. They've been doing a lot. Um, Stacy Curdy has been in and out of assisting the collab, um, and I'm not sure if we'll have the funding um, to support her extra work this summer, but we've got we've got people in addition to the three of us who can help. There has been some a couple of questions about tomorrow. Um, I just want to clarify this. So, um, so this is the last program. This is the only program today. Um, after this, you should go and do other things. I suspect a lot of that will be grading, and I'm sorry, um, but you should get off Zoom. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, though, you should come back and spend as much time on Zoom as you can. It's a full day of programming, but it will be in this Zoom room, the same Zoom room. If you had trouble getting here, um, you can go to our website, collab.plymouthcreate.net, and click the little slippers, and it'll bring you back here. And you can drop in and out of that as, as you like during the day. It, it does not need to be super formal. You don't need to, you can use SCED to tell us if you're planning on coming, but we don't, you don't need to RSVP or register. Um, and those will be facilitated by various people throughout the day, not just Robin and me. There will be a bunch of other people. Um, thank you to all of those people. Yeah, lots of tomorrow. folks on here across the library, Learning Commons, Academic Technology, IT, yeah. Yeah. IT and our yeah. faculty and staff. Um, so we are super grateful. I will tell you also the evening program after dinner is um, tomorrow is happy hour. So you are encouraged to bring your appetizers and the beverage of your choice. Um, so feel free to spend happy hour with us uh, learning and, and working. Um, our collab office is staying open until five today. So uh, especially for a little bit, Martha, um, Hannah and I, um, and I think Matthew are going to be in here. The rest of you are free to go now, but if you have uh, follow-up questions and you want to chat a little bit more, maybe just wait for folks to, to leave and then we can talk um, while you're here. Professor X um, will, will be available for drop-in hours on Thursday and Friday as well. I just saw that question in the... Um, if you want to commiserate yeah. with Professor X, he will be here. Um, Lisa says, I want guidance from PSU about where the break point is for students enrolled in online courses since costs are lower. I think it was asking about tuition um, reduction. My impression is that that uh, right now is not on the table, um, but that's a, I, actually, I think maybe not even a Plymouth State decision. I think that's at USNH, but it's certainly not at the collab level. So I'm not <laughs> sure that'd be a great question to shoot over to um, probably Marlin's team. Um, tomorrow, as things emerge, we will keep your list of questions um, and I'll send those on to appropriate administrators um, after tomorrow as well. Yes, take care of yourselves. Thanks, Katie. It's a great point. Somebody asked us to run a, a session on, on sanity, basically, um, because so many of us are struggling with that. Um, 
and we, we decided we didn't feel like we were the <laughs> because we're the worst people. No, we didn't. We we just heard that yesterday. So we're we've it's a got great idea. Power. Someone should do it. <laughs> yeah, Martha's like, you want us to run <laughs> something on Saturday? Robin and Martha, can I ask you something real quick? I don't yeah. want to leave with this in my mind, right? I need some closure here. Who um, is this? Sorry. This is Roxana. Okay, yes. Hi. Yes, so hi. So thank you for, for this session. It was really interesting. Um, I My question is about the modules, and you mentioned about modality. And I think I, I might have confused that because to me, like I would almost create a module because when you said that, it's like, oh, wow, that's the solution to so many things. But it's almost like I would want to have things that work really well face to face. I would have things that work really well asynchronous online and I would have and then just kind of deploy whatever makes sense. But my module is on teaching this. This yes. is a standalone thing to teach something. And then I want you know, to kind of deploy whatever makes sense depending on the situation. And I was, uh, when you were describing, it's like, oh, I could definitely create something like that. And I actually even have things like that now after the, the pandemic. But the, you mentioned something like maybe even having modules that are only for the live, right? So this is my module on topic X, but now it's the live version, it's the in-person version. And this is my version of the same thing, but this is the sort of the uh, asynchronous online only. So what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, do you see it as sort of a buffet of things that get deployed as necessary? Or do you see like different modules depending on modalities? So uh, I'll say a couple of things. And the first thing I'll say is honestly, what I, I think I, I was mostly trying to lean towards was the first thing that you were describing just now. But I will also say that I have seen faculty very successfully teach courses, modular based courses um, that are actually face to face courses where um, student choice is part, uh, a huge part of the course. And um, the faculty member creates a bunch of different uh, modules that the students can work on and they choose which ones they want to do. And so I could imagine if it worked for your course, if it made sense for what you cover, creating a library of modules, some, on, some that really can be done entirely online, some that have more face-to-face -face components, some that maybe are, could be done as a hybrid, and then um, let your students pick these are the ones that I'm going to do to complete this course and to demonstrate my knowledge. I think that works better in some class contexts than in others, but I think that could be done really successfully. And I think it's a neat blending of high flex and modular course design. Um, what, what we were probably more talking about was a little bit more boring, <laughs> which is more create modules where um, within a single module, you're focusing on whatever uh, modality is required. So if you have activities in your class that truly require face-to-face, -face, package those up in a single module. If you have other things that students are doing that really could be done um, online or blended, package those up in different modules. And then as Robin said, you might be able to reorganize or resequence those a little bit on the fly, depending on what happens on the ground at PSU, um, including I love her suggestion of putting the if you were planning on doing the face-to-face -face stuff right off the bat, and for some reason we don't come back face-to-face -face right off the bat, push that one off, do some other stuff, and maybe work on redesigning that in case we don't come back face-to-face. -face. So that's my thought, Robin. I don't know if you have anything else. No, I mean, I think everything you said, Roxana, was awesome and, and right on. Um, I think you could actually do in some ways, no high flex for a way that you could do no high flex, for example, is that you could just design a fully online class, um, but then have a couple of face to face modules um, and use those if we end up going face to face. Um, I think for lots of people who teach well online um, or who have content that works really well online, that's an awesome solution for fall. Um, and then if we don't have any face to face time, of course, you'll have to redesign those couple of face-to-face -face modules. Um, but the high flex and the modular, you can pick and choose what you use or what you don't use. And you could actually easily get through fall, I think, with no high flex or no modular or a little bit of both, depending on what works. I think 
I'm doing, all, well, I have been doing a little bit of high flex right now because even, even today, so I'm grading um, something that's called applied project at a graduate level. And I'm actually giving the students a choice that they can Zoom with me and I'll give them sort of my input face to face in real time, or I'll just type it and I'll put it in the assignment and it will go there with a grade. But I have many things where I said, well, you do this on your own, but then let's meet on Friday or some of them were sort of like not required meetings when they would just go like, this is just a Q and A, there's no agenda, but there are some things I've seen in the asynchronous portion that I'm not wanna tell you about. So it, it's, I think it's something that we could easily do, but I know for me, I kind of been so rushed to teach and develop at the same time that now having the summer, now I can stop and I can think and I don't have to rush around grading and teaching at the same time as I'm rushing to, to develop the next week. So I was wondering if maybe, I know you mentioned the three weeks kind of thing going on over the summer. I'd love to see some best practices and see some some things, you know, here are the, here is how you think about the high flex or here's how you think about the design. Because I think it sounds more overwhelming than it is. Mm -hmm. And we each are doing some of those pieces anyway. Yeah, you've got a lot already in your, in your bag. Um, by mid-June and probably before that, but we are aiming for the 12th um, as a worst case scenario, we will have that curriculum ready for you to use on your own. And Martha and um, Hannah and I will also be working all summer to support the curriculum. So you'll be able to um, take those deeper dives that you want as you're designing. If you wanna get started before June 12th, um, you know, the ACE framework is already up. All of these slides will be up and everything from tomorrow will be offered and then recorded. So you could also just get started and then make an appointment with one of us for the specific areas that you want to work on. So you don't really need to wait for a, a couple of weeks for us um, to catch up um, because we agree a lot of people will want to spend, you know, some good time on this uh, over the summer. Mm -hmm. The other thing I try to remind people though is that even though we are going to feel very different in the fall, like many of us, um, I'd say maybe two thirds of us might feel like we're not doing emergency coping anymore. Maybe we've spent the summer and we actually know what we're going to do and we feel like, you know, kind of prepared, which is so different than this spring. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our students are not going to come into the context feeling that way. They're going to have expected full face-to-face -face learning. They're not necessarily going to have the tools they need. They're not going to be prepared. They're not going to be good at taking, say, five online courses or um, hybrid courses at once. So part of what we want to also do when we design is realize that even though we might spend two or three months preparing, they haven't really spent any time and they may still be in crisis. So keep all that in mind and kind of just design for crisis, even if we are lucky enough to get out of crisis a bit. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one of the things I'm trying to remind myself as we go.